These may be my final days. I wish I could stand up again like in the old days instead of lying here right now in a puddle of my own making. However, I remember watching a documentary about Mongolia on TV, where people believe that when a dog has lived out its lifetime as a dog, its next incarnation will be as a human. Hearing Denny coming back home and worried sick about me, I have never yearned so much that I could talk like a human and tell him how much I've loved him throughout my entire life. On that day, at the small farm where I was born, just moments after I first opened my eyes to catch a glimpse of the world, I hazily saw him walking towards us. I wasn't the most active among a tangled mass of paws and tails, but Denny chose me from the pile of pups. Looking into his eyes, I knew I was different than other dogs. Sitting inside his car, I sensed a whole new and fresh world, which made me feel somewhat anxious but excited. Denny first took me to a car repair shop and introduced me to his friends. They were all surprised that he had actually bought a dog, as they said Denny was not the type to stay at home. At first, I didn't fully understand what they meant, but luckily, I could feel that his friends already had a fondness for me. Denny also gave me a name, Enzo, which made me feel official to the family. Afterward, I was taken to a place that Denny said would be my new home. I busily sniffed around, exploring my surroundings. Although there was no grass, I figured I could manage and decided to leave my first ever mark in the house. Denny noticed and quickly pulled me out of the house, urging me to do my business outside instead. However, I felt somewhat confused about why he wanted me to do so. I don't remember how long Denny waited for me to finish my business that day, but when we got back indoors, I couldn't resist leaving another mark there. Surprisingly, Denny wasn't mad at me. I saw relief on his face. Afterward, he put me in bed and told me to be a good boy as the next day would be a big day for both of us. I never knew I was afraid of darkness. And at 3 a.m., I went toward Denny to seek comfort with my crying puppy eyes. He took me to the living room and turned on a device where I saw that things in it could actually move. Later, I learned that this device is called a television. Denny switched to a channel where many cars were racing swiftly. I loved it, and as Denny took both my paws to pretend we were racing, too, I could smell his passion for it. The following day, he took me to a place that looked exactly like the one I saw on TV. Seeing so many cars and the racing atmosphere made me feel like I was in heaven. For the first time, I realized that Denny was a car racer. Everyone and everything there left me in awe. I overheard the coach talking about how great Denny was at car racing, which made me feel so proud of my owner. Suddenly, heavy rain poured down, but this didn't deter Denny's speed. He navigated the autodrome with determination and steadiness. I felt like I'd witnessed true greatness when he won the game. Denny didn't forget me. He hugged me tightly in front of the cheering crowd, and we celebrated my first ever car race victory together. From that day on, I became a regular guest at car racing events. Denny took me wherever he went, and I must say, my childhood was nothing short of perfect. Watching him win more and more races, I couldn't have been happier. Most of our time together, we would run together in the morning, and when night fell, we would snuggle together in bed and discuss what he could do better in the races. Some years passed, and it was always just me and Denny. I loved how he always looked at me with gentleness, calling me a good boy. He was my champion alone. Until one day, he took me shopping, and from outside the window, I saw Denny talking to a woman. From the scent emanating from his body, I could smell that something was changing in him. Denny introduced me to Eve and told me she was a friend he had just met. I had to admit, I suddenly felt a sense of threat as I firmly believed this woman would snap Denny away from me. So, without asking Denny, I turned my way, urging him to leave that dangerous woman behind. However, Denny was clearly captivated by Eve. Before we left, he invited her to a band show for the night, an event I always thought was exclusive to us, the homies. At night, Eve also showed up at our house after the show. Strangely, my other two human buddies also seemed to like her a lot. I felt bitter that she was even invited to see Denny's next car race, because she almost knew nothing about racing, but for some reason, Denny didn't seem to mind. Day by day, as spring approached, Eve wasn't going anywhere. The attention that he lavished on her made me jealous as well. In no time, Eve moved in with us, and before I could even comprehend the situation, she and Denny got married, becoming my other owner. On their wedding day, I tried my best not to create any trouble, and for Denny's sake, I even handed over their wedding rings, although I didn't really like the idea. As a dog, not being able to talk allowed me to overhear conversations that humans wouldn't have in front of their kinds. During the wedding break, I overheard how Eve's parents talked about Denny, 
the old man never liked Denny because he thought living one's life as a car racer was putting the whole family at risk, especially a married man. At that moment, I started disliking this old man because Denny was my champion alone forever. Not long after, the three of us moved into another house. I was happy to have more room to roam around. I tried to communicate my feelings by making a fuss, hoping that Denny would pay more attention to me again. But as usual, my gestures were inevitably misinterpreted once again. I also sensed the mysterious new aura about Eve that prevented me from resenting her. While we took a walk outside, with Denny busy explaining his races, Eve revealed that she was pregnant. Denny became extremely excited, but I initially didn't understand what pregnant meant. As time passed, Eve's belly grew larger, and Denny took up an extra teaching job, leaving home frequently. I started spending more time alone with Eve at home. How she sighed and gently positioned herself reminded me of my mother. She called me to her side and placed my head on her belly. And that's when I realized she had a baby growing inside her. By all means, I just hoped the baby would look like me. During Christmas, I happily opened the gift Denny gave me. He asked Eve to join him in his next race in Florida to take care of her, but she encouraged him to pursue his dreams. That's one of the reasons why I didn't resent her. But, well, Eve gave birth to a baby girl while Denny was away for his race. Eve called me to her side, and I had never met a creature quite as beautiful as the little girl. From that moment on, I knew I would protect this little creature forever in my life. I couldn't express how much joy the little girl brought into the family. I became integral to her entertainment, playing fetch with tennis balls and gleefully chasing after them. In the blink of an eye, she turned seven. I was so immersed in her world that I almost forgot I was getting older as a dog. One day, all my worries about Denny were overshadowed by a scent. The smell coming from Eve made me feel scared. She started looking pale, and I wish I could warn her about what I noticed. However, I could only watch and feel empty inside because I could never talk. The day eventually came when Denny left for his race. In the morning, while I was watching his race on TV, I was caught off guard by Eve's vomiting in the kitchen. I rushed to her side, but to my dismay, she was getting worse, and the feeling of emptiness inside me only grew stronger. Everything happened so fast, and in just five minutes, they were gone, not realizing that I was still in the house. Seeing the pouring rain outside, I tried not to panic, as Denny always said panic was a racer's worst enemy. For the next few days, I patiently waited at home for Denny's return, without even food prepared for me. But as the clock kept ticking, I started to wonder if he would ever come back again. Several days later, I began to have hallucinations. I heard a noise from upstairs and weakly went to check on it. I saw the zebra toy laughing at me, and it felt as if it wanted to tear me apart. Knowing that I never liked it in the first place, I started to believe that this was a punishment for not liking the zebra toy. Denny finally came home, and thankfully, I had managed to survive on my own. He was angry to find out that Eve had left me alone in the house. Shortly after, Eve returned and apologized to me. But everything took a sharp turn when they discovered that I had torn apart all the toys in Zoe's room. It was the first time Denny got this mad at me. But I knew he was feeling somewhat vulnerable, struggling to balance between the family and his dream. Some days later, Denny left home again. Eve took me to the woods for a walk, and I still sensed that strange smell from her. But she was trying to stay strong. I never expected the day to come so quickly when I saw her collapse in front of me. In those moments, the urge to speak was truly maddening. All I could do was keep barking and watch as they took her away to the hospital. Sometimes I hated being a dog because they thought I didn't understand anything. Denny left me with the other pals so that he could take care of Eve, but I would have done anything to stay with him, letting him know he wasn't alone. From that day on, our family became different with Eve's absence. I often sit quietly in the house, seeing Denny try to pull his best together for us and how Zoe missed her mother. But days became weeks, and Eve didn't come back home. Denny got an extra job at the garage and did his best to take care of Zoe. However, when he returned home, I often saw him quiet, and then it would fall to me to provide what he needed. I figured out that was the only way to help him. By autumn, we all mastered new skills, and life seemed to return to normal with our efforts put. Another great news also arrived. Eve was permitted to return home from the hospital. Seeing her back well and fine had never more than been my dream because I realized how the family would have fallen apart without her. I didn't understand why good days wouldn't last. Suddenly they all said Eve wouldn't make it, but I thought if the demon were there to get Eve, he would have to get through me first. Before she eventually left us, we all did our best to stay strong, trying not to let the sorrow take over us too much. We also decided to hold one last party to store the good memories. 
The naive asked me if I had seen this day coming, and told me that she wasn't afraid of leaving anymore as she knew it was not the end, and we would eventually meet somewhere else again. I placed my head next to her and watched her last breath free her soul. Denny was also there for her last ride of the journey. The next day, they all departed for Eve's funeral and left me alone in the empty and big house. I tried to capture Eve's last scent and memories and found the hat she used to wear often, the one I had laughed at before. It became a source of comfort for me, helping me bury my sadness. Since then, life never got any easier. Another bad news followed as Eve's father wanted to take custody of Zoe. I had never liked this old man. He never believed Denny to be a responsible man for the family and blamed him for Eve's death. Denny firmly refused the idea, but the old man was cunning, planning to sue him. In a fit of anger, he grabbed Denny's arms, causing him to fall and break his ribs. The next day, while we were at Denny's garage, two police officers barged in and handcuffed him. I became enraged and barked fiercely, but they still took him away. This was the second time in my life that I felt such helplessness, the first being the day Eve collapsed in the woods. In the evening, I was relieved to see Denny returning home, but I learned that he was going through an even harder time. The old man wanted to put him in jail for the injuries he sustained during the argument that day. Moreover, as a punishment, Denny was forbidden from seeing Zoe for 90 days. In the middle of those days, I received a call from Zoe's grandmother, saying that the little girl missed me and wanted to spend some time with me. When the day to visit Zoe came, I was thrilled to see her, and we played our old fetching game together. However, I could sense that she missed Denny a lot. For the first time, I felt lucky that I couldn't talk because I didn't know how to use words to comfort the little girl. But I didn't forget my main mission, which was to punish this old and cunning man. I needed to seek justice for my family. While he was preparing dinner, I purposely made him give me a chili pepper to eat. Even though I knew it was bad for a dog, I still took it anyway. Later, when he was focused on watching the news on TV, I released my concoction of steeped food from my stomach onto his carpet. Seeing his twisted face, I must admit I felt satisfied. As expected, I was immediately kicked out of that place and brought back to Denny. I couldn't recall how long it had been since I last saw Denny back in his racing career, but today, seeing him behind the wheel of that Ferrari, I felt he had somehow found his old self again. The smile on his face was something I hadn't seen in a long time. I knew he was meant for racing. A man even offered him a coaching job in Italy, but he turned it down because the custody of Zoe kept him grounded. Finally, day 90 arrived, and we both sat anxiously at the front door, waiting for Zoe to show up. It had been so long since we sat together as a family and enjoyed a meal. But later, Denny's attorney presented him with an offer, drop his custody claim to 206, and all the charges against him would disappear the next day. At night, I followed Denny out to run in the heavy rain. I sensed his anger as he ran faster and faster, and I struggled to keep up. He crossed the street, and in my hurry to catch up, I didn't see my way carefully. In an instant, I was hit by a car and started losing consciousness. On the way to the hospital, all I prayed for was to live longer, to be there for Denny. My prayers were answered, and despite my old age, the doctor said I had a fair chance of recovery. We returned home, and the attorney showed up again with papers for Denny to sign. I didn't think it was a good deal, so I mustered the strength to snatch the papers from him and tear them apart. I hoped he got the message that he should remain strong and fight for his rights. The court day arrived, and we prepared ourselves for the battle. I anxiously waited at home for some good news, and thankfully, we won the custody case. Finally, we could start a new life after all the sorrow. Denny decided to take the job in Italy, and we planned to move there together. However, my journey with Denny was coming to an end. One day, I could no longer stand up, and I lay in my own puddle, waiting for him to come back and clean up my mess. He came back and told me how much he loved me. He turned on my favorite car racing show and arranged a special race just for me. Like in the beginning, when he picked me up from that farm, I finished my last ride on the track, recalling how Denny had brought meaning to my dog's life. He told me I was his best friend ever. I barked loudly in response to let him know that I had loved him throughout my entire life. And so, I left this world with the knowledge that one day, I would find my way back to Denny after seven years of separation, and in another life form. My son talks about you always. Como te chiami? Enzo. Enzo.